In fact, I had an email today on someone who made things manifestly worse because they sought to argue with a policy officer and now find themselves arrested and in prison. Please consider this. The frontline officials, the frontline corporate officials of the system have been trained to such a reactionary manner now, in many cases to a paramilitary manner, that if you even blink the wrong way, they are being told they have every right to tase you, whether that is true or false. And that is what they're doing. Now, I'm not suggesting that people simply throw up their hands and, and follow the policy officers running rampant around the world. I'm not suggesting that. But I am saying that when you are faced with someone who is extremely armed, who is image trained that anyone that disobeys their orders, they have the right to tase and in some cases shoot. It is a foolhardy act to use that as your line in the sand. Instead, as we will talk in a moment, there is a multitude of administrative procedures and there are, are procedures within the courts themselves to make clear the mistakes and errors of the system, but certainly not the front line. Please, I urge everyone to avoid controversy and unnecessary controversy, not to shy away from the fight, but seem to accept that circumstances have changed. Police now, are policy officers are being trained as a new military militia. The environment's changing. If you want to place your life in jeopardy, then you'll ignore what I'm saying. Please avoid controversy. Because an executor, in particular a general executor, would avoid controversy and one who is not competent to act as in the office of a general executor will not avoid controversy. One who is not ready to be the occupant of the office of general executor will court controversy, will provoke, will act in a manner unbecoming the office. So please take care. Now let's talk now about form and Roman document procedures. This is an update of a section that's come up into the court sites. There's still quite a bit of work to do. Indeed, there's more work to be done on warrant. There's more work to be done on form. But you'll find that this new section is, is there. And I want to go through a couple of things in terms of Roman document procedure and form because I believe this is something that continues to be missed, either deliberately out there with people promoting different formulas and unwittingly because we're not given the clarity. A deed, a will, a notice, an order, these are all form. These are all called forms for a reason. These are documents that are defined in their nature, in their construct, and in their function by Roman statute. In many cases, these instruments are not subject to the arbitrary whim or indeed to the variance of, of intent that we may choose to put in them. If a form is called an affidavit, then that is its title. If you change the title, you change the form, you render it null and void. Eucadia is its own network of societies. And as such, Eucadia has a number of its own forms. 
And if those forms are deviated, they are rendered ineffective. But there is a distinction, a very clear distinction, between the form of Eucadia and the form of the Roman cult. From the perspective of the Roman cult and the Roman systems of law, the Roman document procedures, the forms of Eucadia, unless they are acknowledged at an official level, remain private, not public, and therefore cannot be, quote-unquote, seen in public because they do not comply to the policies and statutes of public law. Similarly, the documents produced by the Roman cult are considered private to Eucadia. And unless we acknowledge as societies to them being valid, then they cannot be seen and have no legal effect to Eucadia. If one is seeking remedy through Roman document procedure, and there is remedy available for certain acts, one must be very, very clear that the Roman system now operates totally on form without much respect to substance. Now, substance is the intent. You remember that when people sent the ecclesiastical deed policy, intent is clear. But form and procedure now is worshipped as the ultimate truth. And if the form is not exactly the way it is expected to be for that jurisdiction, if the procedure is not exactly followed as they define it, they will not recognise it. Now, there is limited procedure here, and it's a constant moving feast. They're changing procedure all the time. I'll give you an example. There is no principle in law, none whatsoever, no history, no provenance, no right, no validity to rejecting an instrument that has writing on both sides. The very nature of a document is that a document has an obverse and a reverse. That goes to the very basis of a valid document. If you reject the reverse, you reject the validity of a document. That being said, procedure now running over substance means in some places like America, where the courts are now scanning documents, they reject documents that are double-sided, even though that contradicts the very nature of the meaning of documents in their system itself. They simply will not accept it. So there are examples, constantly growing examples, where the system of automation, the beast of automation, is coming to the point of absurdity, complete and utter absurdity. And when it comes to the point that they effectively procedurally um, ban any form of remedy, we will have our own systems well and truly established and, of course, it will be time to see the end of their reign of injuring the law. But in the meantime, let us be clear, if we are going to write instruments and present instruments in a form that complies to the public statutes and public policy in the various places that we may find ourselves living, then recognise that those forms are defined by statute. We have not got the licence to come up with our own creative way of presenting them. And if you do deviate in terms of changing the title and do deviate in terms of missing essential elements, then what you render will be meaningless into their system and will have no effect. Now, over the coming weeks, the Roman document procedure descriptions will be improved and the section in the courts will be improved to hopefully provide more and more information to you on how to prepare and consider Roman documents. But for the moment, uh, there is just some basic information put in there from the canons in terms of words, form, deed, document, summons, warrant, license. And this will be improved over time. Now, this is relevant because I keep seeing documents 
that people send to me from people around, and in particular things like accepted for value or solutions for mortgage or people saying these documents are winning in court. The first thing I look at is, and I see them and I see, is this a form prescribed by statute? For example, is it a form that is prescribed in America? Is it a form prescribed in, in England? Remember, this is their law. If you are looking for remedy in their law, in their statutes, then they have the right to determine the form, albeit the balance is out of whack and form has become the God and substance is ignored. So it's totally out of whack. But remember, if you are looking for remedy in their system, administratively, without having to go to court, and you are seeking to submit paperwork, then you are talking about form, and you are talking about procedure. And when I look at the documents that people are presenting for administrative procedure, I see titles that have no resemblance to statute to defined form. I see presentation of the document that has no resemblance to statute of form. I see references that have no relevance to statute form. And there is no way, no way those documents will be succeeding. No way. Unless the particular jurisdiction and the particular judge has completely gone off the rails and decides that they're running a free-for-all and that they will not follow the procedure. And, and I have heard no location on the planet yet where the Western legal system has broken down to the point that they have completely lost sight of their own form. If anything, it's going to the point that it is becoming automated. In fact, in England now, in one of the counties, they've done away with the concept of going to court completely. They just produce the, the orders, produce the fines, without you ever going to court. That is the automation of form. So if someone hands you a document, please consider competence here. Please consider common sense. If someone hands you a document and says, someone is winning on this document, just send it in. Ask the question. Is this a public document? Is this a document being submitted into a court? Presumably they should be able to answer. Yes, it is. And what statute defines this form? What statute defines this form that you have submitted to me? They can't answer it or won't answer it or say, oh, don't worry about that. Then once again, you're seeing people being creative with form without recognising that in the Roman system, Increasingly, form and procedure is considered far more important than the substance itself. Well, let's talk in the uh, time available. And I want to talk about the updates of the UK workbenches, and I want to talk about the uh, improvements to registration. But I want to step into this area of Accepted for value and offsets because I did receive uh, some documents on this and I want to just comment on this. The first thing I'd say is that every single document that I have seen relating to accepted for value has been a private document and not a public document. There are documents that will not be recognised as public documents unless they have been submitted through some form of affidavit and annexed as evidence, unless it has been brought through some mechanism that enables a private document to be seen as an annex to an official public document, not one single document that I have seen through accepted for value qualifies as a proper public document. Now, there may well be lots of them out there, but I, I have not yet seen them. But what makes this concept, and the concept we're talking about is that if we receive bills 
if we receive 